Let's talk about implicit differentiation from the point of view of multivariable calculus. First, we're going to redo regular implicit, as in like BC calc, calc uh, one variable calc. Um, and then we're going to look at the, a new version that we couldn't even have uh, thought about before we had partial derivatives. So I'm going to start with my favorite example, most people, a lot of people's favorite example. Let's look at a circle. That's defined implicitly by x squared plus y squared equals 1. <clears throat> And what I want to do is I want to find the slope of the tangent line at a particular point. Let's say um, 3 fifths comma 4 fifths. That's on the circle because 3, 4, 5 is a Pythagorean triple. Okay. So let's go really quick through how you would see it in BC. Um, we'd take the derivative of both sides with respect to x. d by dx of 1. Well, that's going to be 0. It's a constant. Okay. And that's going to be 2x plus 2y, but then the tricky thing is, is times dy dx. And I'll talk about why you put in the dy dx in a minute and relate it to the multivariable perspective. Okay. So let's just finish up the calculation. dy dx is minus 2x over 2y or minus x over y. That simplifies down at that point to minus 3 over 5. 3 over 4. Yeah, just kidding. Minus 3 over 4. Okay. So a nice calculation. Um, but let's see a little bit more about the principles that are at work here. Okay. Um, in principle, we wouldn't have had to do this. And in fact, even for this for this function, even in practice, we wouldn't have had to do it this way y, in principle, y is a function of x. Well, let me say some things about that, OK? Let's, I'm going to take advantage of the fact that in this particular case, I can actually solve for y as a function of x to discuss it in, in a concrete way. And then I'm going to talk about how often the point of implicit differentiation is when you can't ex solve it explicitly. But in this case, you solve y as a function of x, you get plus or minus 1 minus x, root 1 minus x squared. OK, so let me talk about a couple subtle things and then kind of dismiss them. Okay, The first one is the plus or minus. OK, that's the fact that th really this isn't a function. If you say, oh, I'm going to just have y as a function of x, you look at the graph and you're like, well, that's not going to work. That's not, that doesn't satisfy the vertical line test. But remember, we, what we wanted was the slope of this tangent line to this curve. At this particular point, we knew we were interested in the upper semicircle. And so we really would have had no problem throwing this bottom thing away. Okay. Now that's going to be tricky if you want to do both top and bottom in the same problem. But for our problem, it wasn't a problem. Okay. So that's one thing we often have to do is look at where you are on the function and on the curve and then say, okay, nearby that point, everywhere in this region here, we were fine. We could just ignore the rest. Okay. So that's going to be an important thing. So, all right. So given that um, warning, in principle, yeah, we can think of this as a function. Now, there's other issues. Um, we want this to be differentiable. We really are looking for, if we did it this way, we'd be calculating f prime of x. And we definitely have some tricky points here and here where the tangent line goes vertical. Okay, So we probably want to avoid those points as well. And that's some, there's some wonderfully cool subtle stuff um, that one can say about exactly what's going on at those points. Okay, but as long as I just take those points out, maybe you know make open circles here. Okay, then we really are fine. Okay, and if we wanted to, we could certainly just use the chain rule and get the derivative of this puppy. Okay, as I said, this is most interesting when this the algebra here is difficult or impossible to solve for one of the variables in terms of the other, and we'll see an example of that um, in a minute in the multivariable setting. Um, even so, I wanted to write this down to emphasize that in principle, when you have this kind of picture, you have some sort of implicitly defined curve, in principle, we can think of that, at least usually in some region, because maybe the curve comes back down here, okay? In some region around the given point that we're interested in, we can think of it as the graph of a function, most of the time. And I'm not going to go into the, the, the deep theory of this, but that's what we're really thinking about, okay? so. What we want to think about is that um, we've kind of got a secret function 
that we may or may not ever have explicit access to. y equals little f of x, okay, whose graph, let's say it matches the desired part of our implicitly defined curve just by an equation where it's not solved explicitly for y. Okay, So this is going to be the background of everything. We're going to try to sort of take the derivative of f without having a formula for f, which is pretty cool that we could actually do that. Okay, So now I want to talk about the multivariable perspective. Let me draw the picture up again. There's our circle. Okay. Let's look at what we had. We had x squared plus y squared equals 1. Let me, let me match what the book does. The book likes to always set things equal to 0, and that's a nice simple thing to do. Okay. What have we got here? This is really a function of two variables. Now with multivariable calculus, we can actually take advantage of the ability to think of functions of two variables. We know a fair amount about those now. Okay. So this is really, let's call this big F of, of x and y. Okay. And what are we doing? Oh, we're taking a level set. Okay, an implicitly defined curve in the plane is really just a level set of a function of two variables. Okay, so we have our function big F. Okay, and I'm going to try to write that carefully to make a dis distinction from little f. Okay, so we've got um, what we want to do is let's think about this outside of that one level set. Let's think about the function, it has other level sets. Okay. And I want to think of, let's say, let's say set z equals f of xy, and that's x squared plus y squared minus 1. Okay. And then eventually we're going to be thinking, okay, what I really care about is what happens when I set that equal to 0. Okay. But that's going to be a nice perspective. And here's what I know. Okay. How does that relate to the function little f? Okay, this y equals little f of x, which I don't necessarily have an explicit formula for, but I want to find out uh, its derivative. Okay, in other words, I want to find the slope of this tangent line still. Okay, here's the deal. Here's the one thing I know. It's that if I take x and I take a y that's of the special form little f of x, and I stick those into big F, then I get zero. That's what's special about that's what I know about this little function little f. This is a funky thing. It's a very funky way to define the mystery function little f. That it's the mystery function that if I make y equal to that for a certain x, it's going to hit that zero level set of my function. Okay. Well, this is exactly where the chain rule comes in. And it's exactly the chain rule in the setting where I've got a direct dependence on x and an indirect dependence on x. Okay. So that's cool. So here's what I'm going to do. I'm going to draw the tree diagram and see what the chain rule would tell me here. Okay, so I've got z going to x and y. Okay, now this is one of these weird ones where y depends on x, and so I'm going to just go ahead and have x depend on x in the simple way that just x is equal to x. Okay, and I've got names already for the stages here. That's big F, and then the way that y depends on little f on little x, on x rather, is little f, okay? So um, this is exactly the situation that I address in the total versus partial derivative video, okay? Um, and so that's really important to watch that before you go on with this if you really want to see what's going on, okay? So what the heck? Let's take a derivative of z with respect to x and see what the chain rule tells me. What the heck? It's really kind of begging to be done. Okay, so that's partial z, partial x, that's this guy, that's going to be a derivative of a big F, a partial derivative, times dx by dx. Well, that's going to be 1, so that's going to be nice. Okay, plus, now going down the other part of the tree, partial z, partial y, that's the other derivative of big F, times Ooh, dy dx. Hey, okay. Now, secretly, this is just f prime of x. This is, once again, I keep erasing and redrawing this picture, that's that slope that I want to find. 
that makes sense even in BC. And now this formula is an interpretation of this that you wouldn't see in BC calculus. Okay, so that's going to be pretty cool. So again, this is equal to one. Okay, now dz dx. There's two it's interpretations we could have of that. One is we're really interested in this whole function, all of its level curves, and if I walk in various directions, what's going to happen? But here's the deal. Remember. I'm looking at the case where y is set equal to little f of x. And so I'm definitely on the level curve. As I move x, the y is set to only stay on that curve. And so what's the rate of change of z? That's going to be 0, because I'm staying on the level curve and that z is constant. So we're going to take this further in the next video.